Hello, Augies Worldwide. I'm Dave Kassler, amateur radio call sign KE0OG. Today's question comes to us from John Anathashian, and he's N3NQP, and here's his question. I saw your video on the Step IR Big IR. Step IR is the company, Big IR is the model, and I'm planning on getting it next spring. My question to you is, do all the ground radials have to be the same wire, uh, uh, the same American wire gauge? No. Uh, can some be of 10, 12, and 14 AWG? Yes. Uh, also, do they have to be cut to the same length? No. Can I have some that are 40 feet long and some that are 50 feet and 70 feet? Actually, that's overkill. Um, I would go 30 feet max, maybe 35, but you can have them as short as 20 feet, uh, something like that. I have an assortment of ground wires on mine. So before we talk a little bit about uh, ground radials, uh, let me pay a special thank you to Donald Seymour, my newest patron. And uh, if you too would like to become a patron of this channel, you can go to patreon.com slash ke0og. Now let's take a look at the idea of ground radials. First of all, uh, the answer differs depending on whether the antenna is elevated up off the ground, like on a roof, um, or on a pole, uh, or if the antenna bottom sits essentially right on the ground. Um, now there's always something in there to separate the antenna electrically from the ground because it's fed right there at the base. Okay, now what the radials do is uh, they help make up for the fact that the ground is not perfectly reflective. Now there's a lot of controversy over how many radials you need, how long they need to be, and so on. Let me tell you what I have found works for me. Uh, if you're mounting on the ground, okay. Um, DX Engineering and other people make radial plates. They're pieces of stainless steel about this, this big and They've got lots of holes drilled in them and they send you stainless steel hardware to use with it so you can take the copper ground rod, wrap it around a nut, tighten it down with a, a 7 16 wrench and make them really tight. And then you connect the ground side uh, or the shield of the coax to that. Now, when you are on the ground, you are augmenting the ground the ground does the reflecting and all that sort of thing. And those ground radials sort of help that process. They can be as short as 10 feet. In fact, uh, we did a test of the DX Commander uh, traditional edition uh, with 10 foot radials and it worked just fine. In fact, it worked about as well as the Step IR, uh, big IR, vertical. Uh, what I have on mine are about 30 radials and they are of several vintages. So some have been there for a long time, some I've been adding. One time I took down a um, big loop antenna that I had and cut it into more radials uh, for this thing. The radials are of different lengths, and that's fine, that's fine. Do they have to be out perfectly straight? No, they don't, because the wave, each RF wave goes out in a circle like it would be on a disc just going out from the middle like dropping uh, a drop into a pond you see the the circles radiate for out from it that's what's happening in your radials so you can have them of different distances now i recommend insulated radials use insulated wire i use black and uh, put them around um, so that they're kind of evenly spread out if you can. If you have to put your antenna right next to a house, then you've just got uh, the 270 degrees that you can work with for radials. Some other people are putting them between buildings so the radials end up going out in the other direction. Where the bulk of the radials are will tend to deform the beam from the antenna slightly in the direction of the radials. 
Okay, now, what about buried radials? Uh, depends on your soil. If your soil is dry, really dry, you're in Arizona, you're in New Mexico, out in the California desert, uh, in the Colorado desert, um, you can put them a little bit underground and you might want to do that to keep people or livestock from stepping on them. Um, now, if they are underground, definitely you want them to be insulated. Otherwise, they start acting like uh, uh, ground rods. And that's not what you want. You're not trying to couple to the ground. You're trying to help the ground at RF do its work of reflecting the waves, okay? So we just want something out there that simulates, I mean, ideal, ideally a radial would be a great big piece of sheet metal um, all the way around. We can't do that with RF. We don't need to do that at HF because the individual wires simulate that uh, great big round copper thing which would cost a fortune uh, to put in. So um, I have seen some people use chicken wire for a ground plane. I'm not so sure that that won't corrode on you. And remember, chicken wire is wrapped. It's not soldered. So eventually you'll get corrosion in the joints between the different strips of chicken wire. Now, if you put your radials about six to eight inches under the ground, they will act as ground rods, okay? Not as radials. So keep them up, preferably on the surface. You could even, if you want to go real far, put the base of the antenna up about a foot and then stretch your radials out at about a foot. I don't know, that might give you a tenth of a dB, something like that. Not really worth worrying about. Now, how many radials should they be? You will see some uh, advertised antennas that will say one long radial will do the job. Well, that's a compromise antenna. You're going to be about 3 dB down. In other words, half an S unit or more. Okay. So, um, how many is enough for a ground mounted antenna? Well, you can try three or four, but there, you're, you're still restricting yourself. I'd say a minimum of 12 and a maximum. I wouldn't go beyond about 30 because at that point you get to the law of diminishing returns. And uh, the ideal number is like one for every degree, like the big broadcast stations do. And uh, we don't have enough money to buy that much wire. What I would suggest is you go down to Home Depot and buy a roll of insulated stranded wire about, 10, uh, about to 12 gauge or 14 gauge. It'll cost you about a hundred bucks, okay? And it's 500 feet of wire. Now let's suppose that you want to put in 25 foot radials. Okay, 500 feet will give you 20, 20 radials 25 feet long. Okay, if I have <laughs> added that correctly. But it'll give you a lot of radials. That's probably enough radials that you can put out. Now, I would note that the high voltage point on the radials is at the very ends. And uh, if you have to put your radials out where uh, children might get to them, or a dog that likes to lick things and you happen to be operating at the time, I'd go ahead and get a, a little uh, wire nut, yellow wire nut, uh, and just put it over the end of each wire just, just to keep uh, people or animals from licking that while you're operating. Of course, while you're not operating, they don't have much of any voltage on their microvolts. Okay, so now, all that changes if you elevate the antenna significantly. If you elevate the antenna about, let's say, 10 feet, okay, and you're going to put the radial pattern out and keep it 10 feet high, the needs change completely. 
the radial field is now a substitute for the ground. The ground is still there. The ground still plays its part in reflecting waves and so on. But now your counterpoise is going to need to be resonant. And so you're going to, let's say you have a 40 through 10 antenna. You're going to have to do tuned uh, quarter wave 40 feet, two of them. Okay, so 66 feet out. Then you're going to have to do the same for the other bands. Uh, for 15, you can skip that because the 40 meters uh, will do the job for you. But you're going to be putting out tuned radials kind of in random uh, direction and keeping those taut because they have to be of a particular length. It's kind of strange how antennas work. Now, let me point out that in either case, whether you are ground mounting uh, your vertical like my um, uh, step IR, big IR is ground mounted um, and you attach the coax there, no matter how beautifully tuned the antenna is, the feed point is about th um, 30 ohms. Whereas your cable is 50 ohms, so you're going to have a little bit of a mismatch, about 1.6 to 1. That's okay. Now, some of the multiband antennas have little fixes for this and uh, make them okay, and uh, you'll be fine with that. Okay, or you can put in a ballon if you want. It all depends on how you're going to use it. If you get an antenna uh, like the Step IR Big IR, it puts up a piece of copper. It's got a, a long hollow pipe and it pushes a copper strap up into there to just the right height to balance that. But notice what I said about 30 ohms. That may be the perfect balance point with zero reactants. However, that does not mean an SWR of one to one. It probably means an SWR about 1.5 or 1.6 to one, and that's fine. Now, can you use your radio that has a built-in tuner to tune that out? Yes, absolutely you can. That would be fine. Just remember that when you change frequencies to make sure that you retune, okay? So I think this answers the question uh, which I got from John and uh, can some of the, the wires can be of different thicknesses. They do not have to be cut to the same length. You can have, I would say 40 feet is, is overkill, um, but 30 feet maybe. And some that are 50 feet, 70, you no, know, you don't need that. If you elevate the antenna, it does matter. You need tuned radials, only two per band. Okay, and thank you for your time with my question. And I hope you and your family have a safe and healthy Thanksgiving as well as a blessed Christmas. 73s from N3NQP. Well, thank you very much. So there you have it. A little bit of information about vertical antennas. You can build them yourself. You can buy them. Uh, and the Step IR is a super primo um, antenna. It happens to be what I call my uh, reference antenna. It's not part of the reference station, but it's the antenna that I use for all my comparisons because it's by far my best uh, zero gain antenna. Now, I do have a vertical or a, uh, what do they call it? I do have a gain antenna uh, out back that I use sometimes. It's, it's of course better than these, but uh, as far as dipoles, verticals, and things like that go, this uh, big IR antenna is a very primo antenna and will work for years. So there you have it. If you would like to help support this channel, the best way you can help this channel is by subscribing. Also click like, and if you would like to help this channel financially, you can go to decastler.com support. And until we next meet, 73.